Hello, ladies and gentlemen of Semprof Doc. Um, this is another one of the videos on your introduction, which will tell you a little bit about the course itself, what we're actually going to cover in terms of subject areas and the way I'm going to assess you. So, first of all, you perhaps need a little bit of background about me. You can see from the picture that I'm um, just the wrong side of 60. Um, born in Manchester many, many years ago. Um, moved to Alsace some 15 years ago, 16 years ago now. I first really got involved in new technologies, um, <laughs> I suppose, after my degree. Um, at the time I did my degree, uh, we were working with a thing called an ICL 2903, which was a huge, great beast that filled an entire room and had lots of people running around in white coats and masks. You gave it an algorithm and it gave you punched cards. And we all thought in the final year of our degree, what the heck is this about? How's this ever going to help me? This has got nothing to do with business. I just don't see it. And then early on in my career, of course, typewriters were thrown away. Uh, electric typewriters were thrown away. And we had pieces of kit which were electronic, uh, upon which you could produce text and erase text and print. Um, well, that was quite interesting. And then we added databases to that. And we talked about IT, information technology. We don't really talk about that these days. We talk about ICT, information and communication technologies, because we've seen these new technologies change with the arrival of networks, not just networks inside the company, but the global network, which is effectively the, the, the internet, the World Wide Web. Plus, of course, the emergence of HTML code, which makes it possible for somebody to conceive something on their screen and to make it available uh, through a link. And everybody else will be able to see that page in exactly the way uh, it was intended by the creator of that particular page. So a lot happened in my career. Now, when I was working in about 1993 at Bournemouth University, we were shown the very first generation internet browsers called Mosaic and Netscape One. Um, we looked at it and most of my colleagues looked at it and thought, well, there's a great cataloging tool for librarians. Together with one of my colleagues, Bruce Bryan, uh, we looked at each other and we came out saying the world just changed, didn't it? Um, the rest of our colleagues pretty much ignored it. And Bruce and I got on with learning how to hand code web pages initially, long forgotten now because the very first web editors came out a year or so after that. And we produced and launched our first um, interactive uh, teaching and learning websites for use, as you would say, dans le présentiel, for use with our students. And we launched those in 1994-1995. Now, if I were looking at France, um, that was quite early because mostly with the arrival of Minitel some years before here in France, France didn't run very quickly with the internet. It had already made its investment in a massive system. So uh, France was a little late coming to it. Either way, I developed learning and teaching websites for use with my students um, that had uh, libraries, that had lecture notes, that had course rooms, um, that had contact with the teacher, which had a drop box where students could actually share materials between them and make progress uh, from week to week between lectures and seminars. Seminars et in TD. Um, I did quite a lot of that and for a joke, for no other reason than that, I called my first site Tonyversity. Tony, University. So um, 
a lot of people started getting interested in what Bruce and I were doing. And they started doing research on us as teachers and our websites and our students and how they were learning through the use or the combination of these websites, which we now called blended learning, uh, the combination of these websites with the traditional mode of face-to-face -face teaching in the classroom. So everybody started talking about Tonyversity. So I kind of got stuck with the name. I never really got to do anything that more seriously. So it's evolved just a little bit. Um, and now, uh, having moved to France 16 years ago now, I started using it because I was teaching at, uh, in Germany at Lorac at several of the UHA's campuses, but I was not a full-time member of staff and I didn't have the right to use UHA technologies. So I kept it pretty much all to myself and I have been doing so ever since and will do to the end of my career, maybe in three or four years time with retirement. Um, so there's the a, a little bit of background to Tony University. I've been using it um, obviously in all my courses, as you will see when you use the drop down menus. But in terms of my background, I am all also involved in L3 comms and media and teaching at the IUT where they have electronics and engineering and ICT based courses. Um, I've been doing these type of things and working with students like you now for over 10 years here in France. So hopefully I have something to offer as somebody who is using these technologies, someone who has been digitally publishing since, well, technically before probably everybody in this classroom was born. Um, so I have a little bit of knowledge about that, not to the extent of yours, clearly with your understanding of new technologies. I'm, I've never used Snapchat or Instagram or Pinterest. I'm not interested in them. Um, so you have some lead on me with some of these new technologies, but in terms of how they work and how they're working with people and learning and what works and what doesn't, hopefully I know enough about that to be able to apply the subject that you know most about, technology and communicating with those technologies online in terms of digital publishing. And obviously, the subject itself, which is which is English. I'm kind of the hybrid or the bridge between you on your technology side and me on my native English speaker side. But I have some knowledge which hopefully should help us meet in the middle. So uh, I will have sent you by email a link which will have brought you to see this video, amongst others. It takes you to your homepage on Tony University and there will be links from that to various other tasks or topics that we're going to cover. But you will find that there are two tasks mentioned on the base page that I'm linking uh, to you with the email that you will have received. So if I go through the sort of things we're going to be doing, the first one is actually going to be about your English knowledge and your confidence in English. I need to know how long you've been learning English and whether you feel that your confidence in using English in a written form and in an oral spoken form is at a commensurate level. In other words, if you've been working for 10 years on learning English, you should be pretty confident after 10 years of being able to use your English in a variety of different situations. The question is, are you? So in this first little task I want you to do, it gives you uh, some instructions on how long you have been working and how you can average that out as a group and tell me about it. And also I give you a couple of scenarios and I ask you one is written and one is uh, oral. What level of confidence that you would have operating in those situations? And again, I ask you to give me a group average of this. That's a quick task that you should be able to do in 10 minutes together. And then just a very short video or audio synopsis of that. And you can put it online and send me a link. That helps me get to know you 
a little bit uh, in terms of what level of English I'm looking at and how I pitch my delivery of English. Um, then you have another task, which is going to be to produce a personal professional profile. No, it's not a CV resume. No, it is not a covering letter, lettre de motivation. It's something that introduces yourself professionally and informally to your colleagues. It is not a list of I did this, I did that, I did this, I did that. It's something that explains who you are because as a colleague, I work with you. I don't work with a history lesson of names and places and dates or books that you've read. So you need to introduce yourself to your colleagues at perhaps a new job. You're employed and they want to tell their uh, your colleagues and the business wants to tell its customers about you and who you are. So I'm asking you to do a profile. It's the quickest way that I know of really getting to know what level your English is. I'm going to ask you to write something for me and do a short audio uh, reading of part of what you write on this profile. Okay, the instructions for that are on my website. They're on the base page that I'm sending you to. But you'll also see that there was a spring out, a cascading me menu system to the right. When you hover over SendProfDoc, you'll see a menu to the right that jumps out at you and there's a whole load of things on that. So what sort of other issues will we be doing? Well, I've yet to choose the order in which we'll be doing them, but to give you an example of the sort of things that we're going to be looking at, I'm going to ask you to think about fake news. I'm going to ask you to think about the reliability of content that we find online. How do we identify whether something is or is not reliable and trustworthy? That's very important for you because potentially as webmasters, you will be responsible for putting up content on your employer's website. Well, why does that content matter to you? You are just the agent, the technological expert who takes them from an internal form in the company to an externally visible form on the internet, on the web. Well, the issue is, that if your company actually publishes something which damages someone, the company is going to be liable. And the point is, they expect that a professional webmaster would never put them in that situation. There is a responsibility of the person who's written the content, but there is also, as I understand it, a responsibility for the person publishing the content who bears the title of webmaster. So it's very important for you to understand how to recognize information which is valid, information which is reliable, information which you and the reader can trust because it's correct, it's been properly researched, it's been written in a way that is balanced and appropriate, and it doesn't lie or damage anybody. So I'm going to ask you to write a particular sort of thing, which is a think piece. It's something to remind you to put on the wall in front of your computer screen, um, which reminds you of the things that you should do to check and make sure that the information that's going up on anything for which you are responsible is in fact defensible, is correct information. We have a problem with this, as I will say to you, as you see on the website, that um, if we see companies putting things up under their .com um, uh, extension. Well, they're selling things. You don't expect them to tell you what's bad about their product, now do you? So can you trust them? Not necessarily. Well, there's the first page of Google returns. A lot of people must be looking at things to get on the first page, or they're paying a lot of money to get their stuff on the first page. He who pays for something expects something back. 
Now, why are they paying to get on that front page? Maybe it's biased because no one would ever find the information or want the information. So can you trust dot coms, dot org, associations? Ah, oh, well, they're not commercial, so that's OK, isn't it? Well, is it? Most associations are there because a person or a group of people have a particular viewpoint, a perspective on the world, and they are trying to advance their particular ideas. I could go on, but how do we choose? Surely, if we're looking at the extreme end of that, fake news, we should be able to work out what is fake or not. It should be so obvious, shouldn't it? Well, I need you to find out and to work together to produce a think piece on how to recognise fake news. And I've given you specific instructions on the website. Other things. Well, something that's extremely topical because we're in it, out of it or back in it. COVID, COVID confinement, the way we've been resorting to new technologies as a result of COVID. We have had this massive shock to the system. We have had a discontinuity, something no one was really expecting, though quite a number of people have been predicting that it was always going to happen at some point. Well, how has ICT, Information and Communication Technology, helped in this or hindered in this in confinement? Is it going to be the agent of changing businesses and the way we work? Before COVID, maybe you expected to be a webmaster with a superb office and lots of screens and lots of staff at work to, to, to call upon and order around. Are you changing your ideas now and finding that with all this technology and the way we've used this technology in confinement, you might actually be working your whole career from home? How is this going to change you? Another topic is going to be advertising. A lot of what you're going to be doing is going to be promoting things for the operators for whom you work, selling things. Well, there are some adverts, you look, just watch TV. There are some adverts when you look at them, you think, that's great, the joke was fabulous. And then you think to yourself, I wonder who produced it. I wonder what the advert was for. I got the joke, but what was being advertised? Some advertisements do and do not work. And you are going to be responsible for responsible, sorry, for putting a lot of these things online yourself. How do they work? When does it go right? When does it go wrong? So we're going to be doing some analysis and evaluation of advertisements. They might be written. They could be online, etc. It could be on TV. That's another project for you. We may consider this issue of digital literacy. Just how important is it? Or can we safely forget it? The young generation is automatically literate. Is it? If I take my kids, for example, they know more about Snapchat and everything else than, than I will ever do. But if you ask them to do something with Word, or you ask them, have you ever created any web content? Run a blog. Uh, run a gallery for, you, for, for your photos? The answer is no. They're experts in mining the internet, but not so much in creation. Are we missing something in digital literacy? What about my age group and above? These people being told by the banks, you have to remember God knows how many numbers, otherwise I can't take the money that you have in your hand and put that into the bank. What about them? What about the rest of us that are being told you can't, you can no longer declare your taxes in a paper form? Well, if you haven't got an internet connection, you don't know how to use a computer, you don't know what the internet is, how the hell are you going to do that? Do we still have people who have a digital literacy problem? In the second term, we're going to go on to something else. 
um, which is going to be interesting. I'm actually going to pitch a subject at you, which in principle doesn't seem to have much to do with what you're doing. And it's actually going to be development on your own, sustainability. You're going to go out in, in a world which has to come to terms with this. And you may well be a very important agent in the media of trying to convince me not just to be aware of the need to do more for sustainability, but to be interested, to desire and to actually finally act. You could be part of the solution to the world's biggest problem. So I want to bring that up with you. So those are some of the subjects that we're going to be doing. And I'm going to be choosing different ways of attacking these subjects in English so that you produce as much as you can that develops your vocabulary and your expression. OK, so I hope that's given you a flavour for it. And I sincerely hope that uh, by semester two, things are very much back to a normality in which I can wander into the classroom and actually meet you guys uh, without any concerns of health. So stay safe, stay healthy, and I look forward to working with you. Okay, bye for now.